And I'm Amber. And today we are having a conversation. And well, we were having a conversation, and we thought, why not uh, share this conversation with you? Yes. Bring it to the people. To the people. Um, we've been doing so much on our channel, trying to um, share information, uh, share some things that we've seen, uh, some thoughts, and things like that. So this continues that sharing of information, right? Yeah. 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 I think so. Uh, also, like, subscribe, follow, share, Wandering Suit, the YouTube channel, so we can get those views up, because, you know, this information coming from an LGBTQ perspective, and more importantly, a black LGBTQ perspective. Yeah, share with your people, because right. we got to get this information around, so right. share, share. Right. So today's conversation is going to be about the expat bubble. Um... Which is a really good term to describe it, really. And um, you may have heard this, you may not have heard that, heard of that expression rather, but expat bubble. So it's basically when you move to a different country and you only associate with those who are expats. So you don't really uh, climatize, I guess would be the, was that? Acclimate. Yeah. Acclimate to the country because you don't really have to. You, you only talk to other people from your country or from other countries. You only shop at stores that cater to you. Um, you only eat at restaurants that cater to you. So you're not really immersed. Right. And then that reason why you move overseas or somewhere other country is to be immersed in that culture. It should be one of the reasons. I was going to say it depends on the person. It should be, though. I think. it should be. You should want to learn a little bit of the culture. You should want to... To walk the streets, talk to the people. Otherwise, stay home. And I know that sounds really negative, but really, truly, though. So, what do you think? Um, I mean, I also want to look at it in a balanced way as well, because I think that, I think that, um, coming being American and coming from America, we certainly know that people come from other countries into America, and as for their own support system. They have, you know, a kind of bubble or a community um, mm -hmm. of of people of other people of their um, nation, you know, uh, so that because they share the same cultural values and traditions, and so I think everyone who moves from one place to another, you kind of need that a little bit. You need that support system. I'm not saying that you have to completely um, just totally lock yourself in it but I do think it has its place yeah I mean I think you definitely need it when you first put um, boot to ground right. and I'm, I'm ex-military but yeah you need that because it's a shock to your system to realize that A. English is not the primary language right. uh, you may not find signs in English you may not find food you go to the grocery store and it's a complete shock you know you walk around trying to decipher with Google Translate and things of that nature and you need people to, you know, sort of center you a little bit. But don't get caught up in it, is what I'm, I'm really saying. And so that after two year, years of being in a country, or six months, you look up and realize that the only people you've talked to are other people from America. And then I'm like, well, well, what's the point of that? What's the point of going overseas to a foreign country, a foreign land, and only talking to Americans? How have you broadened your horizons? How have you, what have you learned? Outside of Google Translate, how to use it well? I don't know. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it also depends on how long you're somewhere too. Because we, I, you know, we've been doing this for a year now, but we've been moving in that year mm -hmm. from one place to another. So we haven't been in one place for a year. And I think that when you are somewhere for that long, then you have the more opportunities to kind of expand your circle and or just create a circle in the first damn place um right. yeah so there's that i mean obviously when you're moving around a lot it's hard to um, connect with people the way you would want to and i i have had other expats say the same thing um i've heard them say it and i've had someone tell me you know that they make friends with people and then they're gone you right. know the next week or the next month and and that's just the reality um which is also another reason why you shouldn't do the expat bubble. Why you necessarily don't get in the bubble? Because you need some people who are actually part of that community to be friends with, to network with, right. so that you don't lose, you don't completely lose your network. But yet, and still, you still need a little bit of time to do that. So, um, 
it's, it helps to go somewhere where you can sit for a while. Right. Then you can grow those kinds of connections. Yeah, we're not talking about visiting for a month. We're not so even two to three months. If you're going to be there for a year or more, then you definitely need to move outside the expat bubble. And when we say the expat bubble, we're not talking about just shopping and friends. We're talking about living. For instance, we live in Echo Park in Hanoi or outside of Hanoi. And I really feel like we live in middle suburbia of America in a very grassy, very green neighborhood. And that's fine for right now. But if we were planning on being here for a year or two, I definitely would not want to live here. Because I feel like I'm not really experiencing Vietnam. Um, Because it doesn't look like Vietnam here. It doesn't uh, smell like Vietnam. It doesn't give the energy that I think that Vietnam does give us rather when we go into the town, into Hanoi. Uh, And I've been in Ho Chi Minh City. um, And it's totally different energy. Um, But out here, for the time frame that we're here for, this is perfect for us. And so I'm not saying don't do the expat bubble. I'm saying be cognizant of the expat bubble and, and, and recognize when it's time to move outside of it. Um, what do you what do you think about how we live in? Um, I mean, I <laughs> look. I'm a little bit ratchet and a little bit bougie. So you know, my bougie says I'm fine with being in the burbs. I'm okay with that. I I know how to leave and go where I need to go if I want to experience X, Y, and Z. I know how to do that. So I've mastered that in my lifetime. So I'm I'm okay with you know living out. Um, we're out a little ways from the actual center of Hanoi and we are in an area where it's probably mostly, it's mostly a certain kind of, uh, affluent. yes, uh, people of a certain affluence probably that are living here that are local to Vietnam. So, but I'm cool with that. They're cool. I'm cool. They're used to seeing, um, foreigners. You can tell people here are, are used to it. You know, we don't get the kind of looks and stares and anything like that that we do sometimes even when we go out here not we don't we haven't experienced that a lot in vietnam honestly um like we have in other places Uh -uh, we just haven't gotten that you know whole lot of people you know just looking trying to take pictures of us and get us on camera and all that um but you can definitely tell that here um we're just something we're just another tourist really i mean to to them we're just another resident um, and so, and I like the way that feels for now. I like the way that feels. You, so. you walk out more than I do. So I'm going to give you that. I don't feel that way when we're out walking in Echo Park and we go to the coffee shops to work or to just stroll the neighborhood. It's, it's a great neighborhood. Honest to God. It's, it's beautiful. Um, and I love it out here. I'm not saying <laughs> anything about Echo Park because I really, truly love it out here. But I still feel that it's, um, not very good to me. And it wasn't designed to be, you know, uh, and you can feel it. With that being said, if you're going to come to Hanoi and you want to um, live like a Westerner, then this is the the neighborhood to do it in, the subdivision to do it in. Uh, I also want to point out that if you work in the community, then there's a greater chance of you moving outside of the Echo, I mean the, um, and I guess the Echo Park, outside of the expat bubble. We do not work in the community. We both work online. Um, Amber's an editor. I'm a travel agent, uh, author. We're both podcasting, YouTubing, and doing other things. So we really, truly don't have to leave our home except to go to the grocery store, to go shopping, to see the sights. That does not help us when it comes to breaking outside of the expat bubble. That's true. So our next destination, when we finally put feet to ground, a boot to ground to actually stay, we, we have decided to make a concentrated effort to network and to, to start hopeful friendships with locals. Uh, it's not as necessary here because we're not planning on being here. Um, though, you know, I will, we would love to meet some locals and to get uh, the real experience and not just the tourist spots or the things that you find on Google or other recommendations by other expats, you know. So that's what, we're, that's what we're basically saying is there's nothing truly, truly wrong with the expat bubble. But we are saying be cognizant of the expat bubble and try to move outside of it so that you can really experience the country that you decided to move to for however long you're going to be there. 
And we've also discussed the fact that our situation is different in the sense that there are some people who are traveling alone or traveling, um, they may be traveling, you know, with a group, but still maybe single. Um, and so your experience is going to be different because you're going to do things that single people do and go out to the club or whatever, you know, and so, and we don't do those kinds of things. Um, we owe. <laughs> well, and cause we're old. Um, yeah, so, you know, that experience is going to be totally different. You're going to put yourself in situations where you're going to, you know, be interacting with different kinds of people and both um, expat and um, local. And, and you should, you should to some extent, um, you know, where it's safe and all that. So, yeah, so we're, we're speaking from our experience also. And so we have to kind of um, push, you know, a little in a different direction to make those connections. And so... Yeah, and we started a little bit of that in Cambodia because we were there longer mm -hmm. than we'd been anywhere else, and so and that was nice. And it was al almost kind of sad to, to leave Perfect. some of the people that we met there, um, but it was time to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. I could definitely say that I, I could see us doing it more in Cambodia than we've done it in Malaysia and as mm -hmm. well as here. In Malaysia, we didn't even attempt it. I don't think. Yeah. Um, it just the connection wasn't there. Uh, Cambodia. We saw people every day, we talked to them, we actually, uh, Amber had people on WhatsApp, we were, you know, talk, you know, asking questions, hanging out. We got invited to a wedding. Yeah, we went we to there. a wedding. And we did meet other expats there, too, that we were really friendly with. Um, so, yeah, it, it's been a, a, a great experience to get outside of that expat bubble, even though we still were in one. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and the expat bubble is, is, is truly caused by a lot of things. Um, money. Uh, if you have a lot of money or a decent amount of money, uh, you can live a little bit more elevated. And that tends to put you in more contact with expats. I think it's also a safety thing, too, mm -hmm. at least for me. Because I know even like today when I was walking, where we live, there's a lot of walking space. As we were just saying, it's really, you know, there's lots of green areas, green spaces. Um, but you won't find in Hanoi proper. Not like that. That's true. It's because it's very urban here. Mm -hmm. um, not where we are, but further out. So, yeah, but even when I'm walking, like, I was, you know, going across the bridge. And when I was coming, going across the bridge, I got to the other side. There's, like, this side road. And there were people down there. And there were cars. And, and I was like, oh, I wonder what's down there. And I wanted to walk and see. But then I was like, eh. You know, because it was more, it wasn't exactly Eco Park. It was like, that would take you out to, into town, basically, if you go that direction. Um, and so I wasn't quite ready to do that yet. Mostly because I was by myself and I just want to, you know, be safe. Plus I know my wife will cuss me out. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, there's that too. There's that kind of, you just have to be, be safe and be smart wherever you are. Cause right. you know, you don't know really how people, and, and people here, not everyone here, um, is English is not necessarily the main form of communication it's here not. so you may or may not come across somebody who speaks english if i was some if i was somewhere where there were more that was kind of um there were more people that were fluent in english i think i feel a little different because i could kind of talk to people as i needed to or if i got lost or mm -hmm. um and i can't really do that here i gotta just kind of depend on me and my gps if it's acting right if my wi-fi is working so yeah. you gotta think about that so again expat bubble it's not a bad thing you just need to be cognizant of it. And then try to burst it a little bit. Burst it when you're feeling safe and uh, when it's time for you to, to burst the bubble. Right. Um, but when you first get somewhere, there's nothing wrong with it. Let that bubble surround you for a little bit. And some people will never be in the expat bubble. They do, they do not want to be in the expat bubble. And more power to you. Uh, but as we know, friendships are usually... Uh, Lifelong things where they, you know, generally don't start on Monday and you best friends by Friday. Some people it does happen like that. So it takes time to get to know people, um, and especially if you don't speak the same language and you're trying to learn that language and speak that language and things of that nature. So just be cognizant. Give yourself a break. Uh, recognize what the bubble is, how you are living in it, and then again, try to move outside of it. That's all we're saying. Yeah. And this is an interesting time that we're in right now. Like we just went out last night to dinner and we overheard a conversation with some other 
um, some Americans over there, and um, that were talking about all the rioting and everything in America, and it was just interesting to hear. <laughs> and they were trying their best to not say the word black for some reason or African American because we were sitting there. Um, but so. they were still loud. They were, oh yeah, they were loud. And they were trying to school, apparently, someone who... Uh, two we, Vietnamese women. Right. Just two people. white guys talking to two Vietnamese women who uh, obviously they were dating. Um, yeah. And that's all we're going to say, because we could do a whole video about sure. that. And sure. we're not, because we don't know them personally. No, no, no. It's not necessarily about them, but it's just, you know, it's just interesting to live in the expat bubble, especially during this time, um, as a black person, as a queer person. Um, we out here. And yeah, we're all experiencing the same things, whether we're in America or outside of America. We're we're feeling it, and we're um, we're sharing it to some extent. So another reason, yet another reason, to get outside the expat, expat bubble, so that you are you can remove yourself from some of the stuff that's like plaguing us as Americans. You know, that's not an issue for some other people, but it is definitely one for us. Well, no matter where we are in the world, because um, it's in our head. But anyway, yet another video. Yep, just another one. And again, <laughs> these are conversations uh, that we share and we thought we'd share with you, or the ones that we have rather than we thought we'd share with you. But uh, yeah, I guess this is, this is long enough. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Talk about the expat bubble. I am Kat. I'm Amber. And we are Wandering Soup. Like, subscribe, follow, and always share uh, as we talk about our life as we travel through Southeast Asia and the world as queer black women with the kid see y'all next week Taurus gang <laughs> is that really really though <laughs> we gotta rip everything we gotta rip everything <laughs> see y'all <people. laughs> bye <laughs>